Hi, everybody. Thank you, Mike, for the wonderful um, the description that you just gave. I'm very uh, excited to speak here. And as you have mentioned, today we'll be talking about how to build an open source blocking platform. And since this is a workshop content, and is, this is also my first where I'll be live coding. So if you see me getting stuck or my eyes getting big, know that it's the demo god. And if it doesn't work right now on the stream, this works on my machine and it will also work on your machine. So if uh, there is any problem at the end of the stream, feel free to reach out to me. But I guess that I'll just start by sharing my presentation. It will be less of talk and more of work. And let's get started. So I'll be sharing my screen. One thing I'll just add is if anyone has any yeah. questions, I'm going to be fielding them. Um, so uh yeah keep the chat going and um i'll i'll pass on any comments thanks mike uh so hi everyone welcome uh all of you to the second day of the hugo conference and uh i think uh today is an all workshop day and uh in my talk we'll be seeing how to build an open source blogging platform with AppRite and hugo and before we talk about what is AppRight, what we are going to build, the prerequisites, I'll just give you a bit of more introduction about myself. So um, uh, again, I am a developer advocate at AppRight. And previously, I used to work at Microsoft supporting the Outlook and Exchange uh, terminologies. And um, when it's about me, I like to write code build content and also uh, build, learn and share with the community. So it's my passion and currently it's my uh, job as well. And I'm also a very uh, avid listener. I love people, I love talking to people, be it tech, be it career, be it anything at all. I'm always a text away. That being said, I'm very active on social media with Twitter being my first priority every time. And also, as you can see that I'm speaking on a conference. So that is something that I do. And I love doing that. I love teaching. I love interacting with people. So you'll mostly find me speaking. Uh, if not speaking, I'm either writing a blog or you'll find me just uh, active on any other social media. So that is all about me. And I hope you enjoy today's workshop where we'll be building some cool stuff. Moving forward, so this is our table of content for the day. First is we'll go through what are we building. Um, that being said, it means that uh, I'll, I'll just be briefing you about uh, what is our agenda for the day, or uh, what is it that we are building. Next, we'll go forward with the prerequisites so that um, after this workshop, when you're probably trying to build it on your own, you have all of these installed on your machine and that way you'll be ready to go and start. Next, uh, since we will be uh, building with AppRite and Hugo, and since this is the second day of the Hugo conference, I'm pretty sure that you already know what Hugo is, but AppRite may be something that you're listening for the first time or you have heard, but have not much idea about AppRite. So I'll be giving you a bit of uh, introduction to AppRite, and then we'll go right into the demo. And lastly, I would I love to end my slides with a bit of homework and with resources as well. So that's how we'll end. And uh, before we move forward to what we are building and more on the demo and the uh, tech part, I would say that this is a very beginner friendly workshop. So, and it's curated in a way that if you are a beginner in technology or coding, or if you're somebody who comes from a non-technical background and wants to get started with tech, this is your uh, content or this is made for you. That, which means it's a level 100 content. So yeah, are you excited? Let me know. And also let me know in the comment section probably if you know about AppRite or if you have an idea about what I'm going to build. And yeah, let's uh, move to our next slide. So this is what we are building. I had a very big title that told you that we are building a blogging platform. And with this example, I'll be showing you that we'll be how to build a blogging platform. And it will not take more than a few minutes uh, unless the demo gods backfire on me. And we'll also not be using too much of code because uh, as you know that Hugo is there and is su super friendly with markdown files and with 
app, right? Uh, it will help us with the backend. And uh, we have some SDKs and other um, APIs and many things that are already there for us. We just need to use them and bring it all together. And uh, the example will be of a blogging platform, but you can use this and use your creativity and build something of your own, maybe a portfolio, maybe a photography site, anything that you like, or maybe a hobby site, anything that you want to build. So yeah, uh, I'll just be briefing you about the goals. First goal is to install Hugo and to install AppRite as well. And then after these two are done, like our two uh, solutions or platforms that we'll be using are installed. The second uh, criteria is to choose a template from Hugo. Hugo has some amazing templates. So just go there and choose one for yourself. And then we'll be using some SDKs from AppRite. And finally, we'll be bringing all of them together to build a platform for ourselves. If you're excited, let me know. Next, uh, here are some of the prerequisites that we need before getting started. First is to install Hugo. Next, we uh, need to have Docker because with Docker, we'll be installing app, right? Don't worry about how easy or difficult it is. It just takes one single command and you will be up and running in just a few minutes, one to two minutes max. And then lastly, an ID of your choice. For me, it's VS Code. And for you, it can be anything else. Or if you want, you can uh, you know, build your own ID, anything that you really like. Next, uh, so here comes the interesting part. We'll be talking about AppRite and uh, what is AppRite. So like I mentioned, AppRite will be handling the backend for us. So if you have guessed it, you have guessed it correctly that it is a backend as a service solution. Or, and it is self-hosted, so it provides us with all the core APIs that are required to build any application. All that you need to do is whenever you're building a project, uh, you need to take care of the front end and the back end can be handled by AppRide. And uh, you can easily use that for this for your projects, for hackathons, it's a very friendly tool. Or even if you are building a solution for your company, anything at all. And some of the services that are provided by AppRite is databases, because we will be working with databases in the next few minutes. And of course, it also has authentication and users. And to mention that currently we are supporting 32 OAuth providers. So anything that comes to your mind or anything that you want to make a connection with, you probably have it already. If not, it's an open source project. You are free to go and make your contributions. Then we have storage. Um, we have uh, AWS, we have Backblaze, and many more. Then we have functions. And recently, we are also supporting some cloud functions. We also have a console. We have phone authentication and many more features. Anything that you think of, uh, we, have, we probably have it already, or we are trying to build that for you. And uh, if you want to see where is AppRite, just type AppRite.io. Next, uh, we'll dive. That was all the uh, content where I was speaking. And this is time that we you used to type something and uh, maybe put your glasses on. If you don't have glasses, use something to uh, shed the blue light filter out of your eyes and get started coding. So I'll go back to my browser. And uh, here are a few options that I have already open. First is a quick start tutorial of Hugo. Then we have the themes of Hugo and then there is an AppRite console. And then lastly, we have AppRite.io. And uh, I'll just show you how to install Hugo quickly because I'm an, on a Windows machine and also show you how you can do that easily. But for AppRite, I already have it installed and I'll cut the part of installing and having my Docker up and running because it's already doing that. So for installing, you just need to go to AppRite.io and you click on Get Started. So if you are on a Windows machine, you can probably uh, copy this partial command and just click on run and in one to two minutes it will be there for you. If not, you can use single click installations using Gitpod and DigitalOcean. So this way you'll be having app right on your desktop. Now our second task is to install Hugo. 
So I'll just open VS Code, which is my ID of choice. I'll spin up a new window and I'll open a new folder. So I'll go here, open a new folder. I like to keep my desktop clean, but for now I have my folder here on my desktop and I'll call it demo. Yeah, so that is it. This is an empty folder that I have with me right now. I'll open up the terminal and like I mentioned that I'm on a Windows machine. So to install Hugo, I'll be using a package manager called Scoop. To install Scoop, you can go to scoop.sh and have it installed on your machine. And to install Hugo, all that you need to do is run a simple command, scoop, install Hugo. I already have Hugo in my uh, machine, so it will show me that it's already there, go and update. And it is the recent version of Hugo that I have, so I don't need to update that. Next that I need to do is, I mentioned to you that I'll be using the quick start tutorial that I just showed in my browser. So it has few uh, Hugo commands that we'll be running. And using that, you'll see that we'll have a demo site uh, up and running in just a few minutes. So the first command that you we need to type out is Hugo new site quick start. And when we do this, we see that we already have a folder named quick start. And there are some other folders within it that is uh, archetypes, content, data, layouts, and all of these. And now the next task that you have to do is you need to choose a theme for yourself. So I'll go back to my browser. And um, so here are themes for you. You can go to themes.gohogo.io. Anything that you like, you can go to your blog or min if you like minimal ones. I really like minimal themes. And for that, I have already chosen one that is called Nielo. I'll show you that right here. This is how the Nielo theme looks. All that you need to do is go and download. This will open up in a GitHub repository. So you can clone it from there, or we can use another shortcut and uh, we can do git submodule. So I'll go back to my code and here we'll CD into our quick start folder because we want our themes to be added in under the themes folder. And then I'll initiate a repository with the git init command. So far we have used only three or four commands. That is first one was to in, uh, have the quick start tutorial within us. The second one, uh, is the git in it and the uh, and the CD where we just went into our quick start folder. So we have our git in it uh, here. Now our next task is to add the theme. So we, oops, I'll uh, go here. I'll use my notepad here. And I already have a command copied that is to add our theme for the day that is Nielo. So I add here and um, it says that git submodule add. So here it shows a theme called Ananke. This is something that I was using previously, but for this particular example, I'll be using Nielo and I type in N-I-E-L-O and I click on enter. So it is cloning into it and uh, oops, it shows a problem. It might not be, no I don't know if it's from the new dynamic. Um, uh, sorry? Is the, uh, yeah. I'm not sure if the new dynamic, if it's in their GitHub account, that theme. Let's see. Oh, I yeah. guess it is here. Right yeah, yeah, that, that's yeah. what you want. Great. So I'll do here. And I'll just omit the part and I'll just paste this one here. And I think we are good. Okay, yeah, we are. So it is uh, cloning our uh, theme. And I have used some module because it is not bringing any changes and any updates that we have within the theme, it will be automatically uh, shown within your uh, blogging site or whatever you're building with Hugo. 
So yeah, when you go here under themes, you see that Neolo is already here. The next step that you have to do is go to your config.2ml file and here you can do it manually or you can run a command. And the next thing that you have to do is add theme equals to Neolo. That is it. Now this is done. Our next uh, task is to add some content under this content folder. So for that, we use a command Hugo new posts and maybe my first dot md. So I do that and you see that I have something created under uh, my content folder and it's here. So it has a title, a date at the draft equals to true. Uh, we want it to show up on our blogging platform. So I'll change the draft here equals to false. Or uh, if you want, you can just delete the draft part. And maybe I'll write something like, hi, welcome. And right now that is it. I What I'll do is to see if this is working perfectly, I'll just type in the command Google server minus T and enter. And it says that my site should be here. So you can see that um, how quickly we uh, had our site built with Hugo and it has the content here. So when I click on my first, you can change the name of the title again from the MD file and it shows hi, welcome. So we go back and now what we want to do is we want this content to be saved in AppRite and AppRite to, uh, and while we are building uh, this, uh, a site, uh, we want Hugo to fetch that content from AppRate. And you may ask that, why are we doing it when we can have a markdown file already created and do it manually? So that is a part of your homework that will come up in the next steps. Um, once uh, it's there on localhost, you can host it somewhere else and uh, you can create a GitHub repository of it. And you might, um, every, uh, article that you write, you might want to uh, be, keep it updated to your blogging platform with a single commit or maybe an issue request. So that is where to automate the stuff, AppRite comes to your help. And for that, uh, we'll go back to our browser and then we'll come here to the AppRite console. So we are here. So if you have AppRite already installed uh, and you click on localhost slash console, you console will look something like this. Currently, I already have a project. If you are a beginner with AppRite, you'll have no project here. So we go ahead and click on create project and I give it a name, maybe Google blog and I click on create. So it is creating a new project for me and my new project is ready. So as you can see that it provides us uh, with database options, storage options, users, functions, there are webhooks, and uh, there are many other options to try from. But for this particular example, we'll be using database. So we go to database, and I want to add a database here because this database is uh, will contain my content of the blog, and then it will be building this content into a markdown file when I run the command Google server minus T. So I go here, add a database and maybe give it a cliche name test because this is the first thing that comes to my mind when I'm building something for the demo and I click on create. So our database is built from scratch. And if you go here to the settings, you'll see that we have a database ID. Uh, this is something that we will be requiring in the next few steps. We go back to our collections and we need to create a collection because within our collection, a document will be available. So I go there, click on create a collection, give it a name, maybe articles, because it will contain the content to my articles. So I name it set articles. And uh, this again, it gives us the collection ID and previously we saw the database ID. So for us to fetch something from the database, we will be needing both the database ID and the collection ID. We keep it copied somewhere or we just scroll, come back to the console and select it from there. 
and you see that there are two types of permission the first one being the collection level the second one being the document level and we say the document level because our motto is to fetch the documents that are there within appright and if you see that it gives us granular access over every document and the collection level requires special permission for you to access the document so i uh, go to document level and click on update and my updation is done successfully i go back to my documents and here i need to create an attribute so for any blog there are um, i guess two um, main attributes the first one is the title that goes the title of your blog um, and the second one is the body of the blog so we go ahead and add two attributes and is all string in nature so we give it a name the first one being title size can be anything i'll keep it to 255 and then i click on create so my first attribute is here and my second attribute is body so i click on body it's 255 is there by default and i click on create so currently uh, when i go back to home my hover block uh, which is my project within app right currently it has a database it's named as test it has a collection within it that is articles and articles have two app rights uh, sorry two uh, attributes that is a title and a body and currently it has no document uh, we'll add a document after we write some javascript code so now comes the coding part and uh, though it it might sound as typical coding but we'll actually be doing a bit of cheating by going to app right docs okay and using the sdks that it already have so i go here to documentations and i scroll down here there is database okay and i scroll down further and now there is a list documents that i have so there are many different types of methods that we have we can create a document we can list a document get a document update or delete basically the crude options that we do and for this particular example we'll be using list document because i want um you know i want who go to build from the documents that i have here so it needs to get the list of all the documents that i have within my app right database all that you can do is uh, simply click on copy and if you see the code here it, what it is doing uh, so it has a client it has database and the database id if you remember while we are creating the database i showed you two different parameters and one of them was the database id and the second one was the collection id so this web sdk will help me make connection to my app right database but before that we need to have some connection make to my app right project so for that you see it has two different parameters and one is the endpoint and the other one is the project so we go back again to our app right console we go here to the settings and we see that our project id and api endpoint is here now we go back to the code and to save some time and also to save myself from the demo calls i already have the code here which i'll do a bit of copy and paste and before that what i'll do is i'll stop the server uh basically the blogging platform that was running in background the one that we built from the quick start tutorial and i'll go back to my root directory and what i'll do is i'll install app right and i'll wait for the node modules to be installed and like you can see it's here uh, there is a package.json there is uh, other files already here for me and then what we do is we create another file and we oops it's not under quick start it should be under our main directory that is the demo folder is yes. there i give it a name maybe fetch arc which means fetching the arguments.js and i cop have a new uh, javascript file here i copy the code and paste it here 
but I'll be explaining you what we are doing from start to end. So if you remember the web SDK code that I showed you, we'll be using exactly that and we'll be using a few more lines to make the content from our app right into a markdown file. So if you see, we simply copy it here. It has a, uh, it is importing the client and the databases from AppRite, and then it has two constants. One is a client, another is the database. The database has the database ID, and then we are also setting the endpoint and the project, and then we are listing the documents that we have there. And what we'll do is once, if you see, that is exactly what I have done here. And it's still here, we'll be listing it. But my, my next task will be to convert the data that we have into the readme file. So first what I'll do is I'll go line by line for it to be easier. This one here should be our collection ID. I'll go back here and if you, sorry, it should, it should be a database ID. If you see here, it is a database ID. Now I go to app write settings. I go back to my databases and I click on my database, which is test. I go here to the settings. I copy the database ID. Oops. Yeah. I copy and paste it here. I make sure you're saving every time you're making any change. Next are, uh, task is to copy the endpoint. The endpoint is typically the same. And the next task is to copy our project ID. So I'll go back to my console. I'll come here to my settings and you see my project ID is here. And like I mentioned, the endpoint is typically the same as localhost slash v1. If you want, you can go ahead and add a custom endpoint for yourself. Now we go back to your file and we come here and we do this. And the next task, uh, we have already uh, copied our database ID. And for the next part, what to list the documents, we'll be needing the collection ID. So I go in here, I go back to my databases, I go back to my database collection is right here. And then I go to the settings here and from here I copy the collection ID. Yep. And I pretty much paste it here. So far, all that we did was to import our client and databases from AppRite to given, uh, you know, to make a connection with AppRite, we needed the endpoint of the project ID and to fetch the database and the collection, we needed two different parameters. One was the database ID and the other one was the client ID, right? And then it is uh, returning us the response. And what I want to do is the response that is returning, we want to catch it and make it into a markdown file. So what you see right here must be very similar to what we saw in our markdown file right here. So if we go in here, we see that uh, there's a triple dash, there's a title, there's a date, draft, uh, draft is an uh, optional parameter. If you want, you can omit it, but it will still work the same. And then we have some content there. So we go back to our JavaScript file and we see that it has the title, it has a data, and then the body, uh, we enclose it on the description. So that is pretty much it. The response that we are receiving from AppRite is being converted to markdown in these three lines. And next we run a for loop so that it uh, basically uh, converts all the data that we have in AppRite and then it needs to be added to a path. And the path right here is under quick start content and posts. So if you remember, we have a quick start file and then we have this content folder within that there is post and within uh, under this we have our markdown files. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the that's all that you need to write in here. And now what we'll do is we'll do some npmi to make sure that if there are any packages that is needed to be installed, it is being installed. Yep, that is pretty much it. 
Now we go back to our app, right? And we go back to our documents here and we need to add a document right now. So maybe we write something like, this is a test and then we write, this document and we click on create. Now we go back here, oops, and uh, yeah, the, it's there. And the next thing that we need to do is run Google server minus D just to see if it's running. And we come back here and we see that test, this is the test blog is here. And that is basically what it did right now. That is all. Uh, so whatever we wrote here, it comes in um, within our uh, blogging platform. And the other things that you see here is basically something that I was trying to make sure nothing goes wrong. So now uh, that is very much it. Uh, that was all of the demo. What we did from start to the end was to uh, install Hugo themes, to install Hugo, and we um, to save some time, we used the quick start tutorial that Hugo has it. And the next thing that we did was uh, after AppRite is installed, we created a new project, we created a database collection, and um, we used this uh, web SDK that it has. We added the different parameters like the endpoint, um, um, the database ID, the collection ID. And then what we did was once we were having all of this data, we converted into our markdown. And then finally, when we ran the server yet again, it came up to our site. So yeah. Uh, that was all of the demo and I'll go and uh, present my screen once again. If you liked it and if you think that this is something that you want to try, these are a few of the resources that I have listed for you. The first one being the Hugo documentation, which is super easy to follow and very effective. The next one is uh, appright.io, basically everything that I was showing you, the documentations uh, comes from there. And if you feel that AppRite is a cool project, feel free to join us on the Discord channel at appright.io slash Discord. And you can also find us on GitHub since AppRite is an open source project and it's by github.com slash appright slash appright. So yeah, that's all from my end. I really hope you have enjoyed this small tutorial. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hamantika. Uh, yeah, that was that was great and a great demonstration of how you can pull in and populate data onto a Hugo site. It was really interesting. Um, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about AppRite. Um, so I saw that you were running it locally. Um, yeah. How would how would you get that set up to production? Uh, so was it for AppRite or uh, did you mean for the, like my blogging platform? Uh, let's, let's say AppRite and then we'll say blogging, blogging platform. So both. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we have a, a different uh, set of instructions for AppRite in production and there is uh, some documents for this. So if it's a question, I can definitely send the documentation link here. And for Hugo to be in uh, the, like the production, my you can host it anywhere. You can use Netlify or you can also use GitHub. Uh, I would prefer GitHub because while I was mentioning to have some automation or oh, sorry, automation within it, um, I would have it hosted on GitHub pages and then probably I would create an issue and um, issue of my new article and it will be fetching the data from AppRed, converting it, it into the markdown and uh, having it into my blogging platform. So yeah, got it. yeah. So that's it. Got it, got it. Um, and so the, so in that case, I would host uh, AppRite, I think you mentioned at the start on DigitalOcean, AWS, um, something like that. And Gitpod. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Gitpod, interesting. Uh, and then, and then my Hugo site, I can just deploy anywhere and it just needs to run that script and it will pull in the data from the database. Exactly. 
Cool. Yeah. yeah. Really cool. What what else is uh, AppRight capable of? We saw a, a, a database set up there. What else can it do? Yeah, it also has a uh, different uh, storage capabilities. Uh, so there is a uh, backblaze, like I mentioned, then there is AWS and you can, uh, there are some more um, with storage facilities that we are adding and recently it also has phone authentication so you can use Twilio I think which is a very popular tool and it also has functions it has new cloud functions to it and um, AppRed is heavily used by Flutter developers and mostly mobile developers so if somebody mm. is thinking to do something that way I think it can be done as well and i have also seen some cool submissions on building games with that right so personally i haven't tried that yet but it's definitely an interesting platform to start and then there is authentication there is users the console i just showed i also mentioned about functions along with the cloud functions uh, and uh, when it comes to auth and users i will say that um, AppRite, it has a lot of OAuth providers and uh, it's 32 at the moment with two more peers which are almost there to be merged and uh, the list is expanding and with every release that we have it, it's just it just keeps on uh, increasing and we have some uh, new plans in future with the cloud release being the major uh, one of mm. them and that being said so if you go to the appright.io page, so, uh, if you scroll to the bottom, you have an option to sign up for free cloud credits. So everybody if who does it and is an early sign up user, they'll be getting free credits. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And there are many more uh, fun things that are in plan. Got it. Very cool. Uh, we've got a question from the chat, uh, Brian K. Uh, since the data is in your database, can you... Could you do, let's set up a full text search? Let's say you had 10,000 pages in your database. Uh, how would you set up some search functionality there? That's a very interesting question. And that is something that I am working on right now. Mm. Uh, so uh, yeah, I wasn't supposed to say that, but I'll just say that here. Uh, so there's another uh, open source platform, Belly Search. I'm not sure if you've heard about that. It's similar to Elasticsearch with some differences, but open source. And uh, so using that, what and uh, since Apparat is also built on PHP, so we can easily uh, use that. And um, it, like I mentioned, uh, you can build a plugin. That is something that I'll be doing as well. And you can have those search facilities within Apparat using MediSearch. Very cool. But if you can. Yeah, if probably in the next few weeks, in the next one, two weeks, that is something that I'll be working on and be uh, having that live. Awesome. And um, correct me if I'm wrong, Brian, but I think that's what you were using uh, currently. So yeah, that sounds like a really interesting integration. Uh, we've got one other question. Um, can you call a webhook on document create or update? Yes, we can, but uh, I, I am you to explore that functionality of AppRite. I leave that for you to probably do that as a homework and show me and build uh, cool things with it. And uh, that being said, um, it also opens some new opportunities to contribute to our project. We are always looking for new solutions and we have an awesome AppRite repo where anybody who builds cool projects can uh, bring up a PR there. Yeah, but yes, awesome. we can uh, use a user webhook uh, for the functionality that has been asked for. All right, we've got a lot of questions coming through. Uh, is there a data type for rich text? Um, so you get more robust editing UI. So rather than just having that um, text field in AppRite, having, I guess, start asking for whether you can do bold and italics and really make it into a content management system. Oh, wow, that's something really interesting. And sadly, we don't have that yet. But I would request you to maybe add it to our issue list there so that our team can work upon. And uh, we are very quick to respond to our issues and have that incorporated in our features. So maybe if you can uh, you know, uh, request for that, we'll have it very soon. Great question. All right, I think that's everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, thank you so much for joining us today, Hamantika, and 
uh, I hadn't nice. seen Upright before, and it was really cool getting to see a, a glimpse of what it's capable of. Yeah, I'm really excited, and yeah, that's all. Thank you for having me. It was a very big pleasure.